Hello and welcome to Good Morning Thailand. Today is Friday, October the 4th. I'm Jay. And I'm Alex. And today we'll be talking about floods ravaging northern Thailand, the new destination Thailand visa application process, and a little later, a daring attempt by a North Korean to repatriate to his home country. Mm. We're going to start with an update today regarding the bus company, which is under fire for concealing illegal gas cylinders after deadly accident. We have an update regarding the bus fire that has rocked the nation. The company behind the bus fire that killed 23 students and teachers in Patum Thani is now under scrutiny for attempting to hide illegal gas modifications. Days after the tragedy, authorities discovered five other buses in the fleet being stripped of unauthorized gas cylinders at a garage in Nakhon Ratchasima. The fatal accident involved an aging bus with excessive uncertified gas cylinders, which likely contributed to the fire. The Department of Land Transport has suspended the company's license as investigations continue to determine the exact cause of the blaze. Mm. Shocking. Yeah, pretty scary stuff. And like this, it's almost like an admission of guilt, right? Yeah. Like that they've done uh, this to many of the buses within their fleet. Clearly, it was a contributing factor to the bus blaze. And you have to wonder why they were cutting these corners. Like mm. I think uh, maybe it's just so that they can stay on the road longer, yeah. right? They can keep the the buses being more efficient. Yeah. So it's just a classic corner cutting to yeah. make a little bit more scratch yeah. at and, the cost of safety. And well done to the investigators. Get, Mm. Well done to the investigators for actually catching them trying mm. to get rid of the other tanks from the other buses. Uh -huh. Yeah, before they could, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, they're trying to hide their tracks. Like, whoops, yeah. this, this could look bad on us. I mean, it's going to look bad no matter what, but yeah. uh, the, obviously the scrutiny was already there. So mm. a little silly to attempt it, but at the same time, uh, yeah, some heads are going to roll, that's yeah. for sure. We'll see. <clears throat> well, anyways, that's not the only blaze that happened this week, apparently, because down in Phuket, a tour boat blaze injured a captain and has sparked yet another investigation. So a fire broke out on the Flamingo Lady 2 tour catamaran in Phuket, injuring the captain and sparking a new investigation. The blaze occurred around 10.35 a.m. on October 3rd, after the boat had dropped off 22 tourists and was, re and was returning to Alpo Pier. The right engine overheated, igniting oil vapors and setting the vessel on fire. Now, Captain Charun, injured while trying to control the flames, was hospitalized. Fortunately, no passengers were on board at the time. Authorities are now examining the cause of the malfun malfunction and the vessel's safety measures. Uh, yeah, what's going on, Thailand? Mm. <laughs> I don't know, too many uh, important places. Uh, the tourists now this time fortunately were off the boat yeah. well, boats in general are, mm. are on the news a lot more than other vehicles because a lot of the times they haven't been maintained they haven't been taken mm. care of they're overloaded they're carrying too many people there's always one or two reasons where people mm. are abusing it because it's probably much harder when you're out in the sea to kind of like regulate these things yeah. but yeah salt water also has a strong degradating effect on mm. uh, equipment like that so it's even more important to yeah. stay and maintain that it's expensive to have a boat. It sure is. But, but you know, people cut corners here. Yeah, and they like to run it into the ground because uh, that's how they make their money. So you can understand mm. the economic incentives are in one way, yeah. but now we are seeing very clearly this week mm. there is a real cost yeah. when you cut those corners, and there's a reason why regulators put these rules in the first place. Yeah. Right. Well, in more shocking news, mm. men armed with swords and bats storm Udontani Children's Center. Two men armed with swords and baseball bats stormed the Bandon Charan Children's Development Center in Udon Thani on October the 2nd, causing panic among teachers and children. Now, CCTV footage captured the men attacking each other before chasing a man identified as Tham who had fled into the center for refuge. While no children or staff were harmed, the attackers damaged Tham's motorcycle before fleeing. Police are investigating the incident causing the CCTV footage to track down the attackers. The motive remains unclear, though police suspect Tham was targeted by known enemies as reported by Thai local media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, scary stuff. Uh, usually this is some, is some gangster stuff. Somebody yeah. owes money or mm. something like that. Uh, reminds me of a story. I, I experienced a similar thing in China. Yeah. When I was just walking back from my school mm. uh, to the public transport, some guy came 
and started attacking another guy. Like, this was mm. Chinese on Chinese crime over there. We called the police. They came over. They, eventually, they came back with machetes. Whoa. Way escalated. Mm. And it also was very near a school. Mm. So uh, these guys don't care. Yeah. Um, in, in this situation, hope, fortunately, nobody was injured yeah. or hurt. But Especially mm. last year, late last year, you know, we had that incident where the... Um, Mm. Was it last year, I believe, uh, that mm. the someone went into a kindergarten and then killed uh, all mm -hmm. the children? Um, it, it can happen anywhere. Yeah, so pe people are more alert, and like when you mm -hmm. see two people just walk in, walk, run in with a sword and a bat, uh, mm. obviously you're going to be scared for your life. So I hope that the teachers and the kids there and and they up their security. How yeah. are they able to just come in? I don't know. Like, yeah, this is a, a problem around the world, really. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, fortunately, I was going to say, fortunately, these guys were just targeting the one guy running away yeah. for whatever reason who probably got himself in trouble mm -hmm. in some kind of other way. Yeah. And they weren't there to target uh, the school itself. But, uh, yeah, no <laughs> excuses there. That is a, a lapse in security. All right. Well, anyways, more tough news, guys. We have to go up north over to Chiang Rai where a uh, fresh wave of floods has uh, spurred on new warnings for the region. Now, Chiang Rai is facing new flooding as heavy overnight rain caused the Sai River to overflow, affecting the Koh Sai and Mai Lung Kun communities. Troops swiftly evacuated residents, but further rain is expected, with 70% of the province under threat due to incoming high-pressure and monsoon systems. Low-lying areas, including the Meng and Mai Sai, are bracing for potential floods and mudslides. Residents are still struggling with last month's flood aftermath, and officials have called for readiness with rescue crews and equipment. Now, the situation remains critical, uh, according to our local media. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, it's happening all over Thailand now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of work with uh, Bangkok Community Help, which is a wonderful uh, charity foundation that's based out of Bangkok, but they've been up in the north working overtime uh, trying to uh, uh, help alleviate a lot of the pain that people are feeling up in that region. So uh, if you guys can find it in your hearts to please donate, that would be wonderful because every little bit helps uh, as this is still an ongoing and yeah. persistent issue for the people in the north. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. definitely. All mm -hmm. right. Um, okay. Well, now I got fun stories for you. Mm. All right, mm. we're gonna move on to our uh, last couple of stories uh, regarding a foul-smelling trail of feces found in Thai Parliament. Was it you? Yeah. No. <laughs> Have you ever had a shitty time at work? Well, <laughs> a shocking incident at Thailand's Parliament on October the second saw a trail of feces stretching from the elevator near the souvenir shop to a restroom by the cafeteria in the. MP's wing. The foul smell affected everyone nearby and housekeeping staff were called to clean up the mess, which lingered mm. despite their efforts. Mm. The source of the incident remains unknown, sparking concerns about security and sanitation within the parliament. The unusual occurrence has prompted calls for an investigation to uncover who might be responsible for this shitty situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, who? Who is the culprit? How did they not have CCTV, right, like to figure this out? There are two possible scenarios. One was this was an attack, <laughs> a toxic attack at the parliament. Or two, mm. someone just, you know, had some, some thumb and it didn't agree with their stomach. And, mm. you know, they were stuck in the elevator and they got to go and they mm. ran for it. But while they were running for it, bloop, yeah. Now, is the trail leading to the bathroom or yeah. away from it? Mm. Uh, wh where is the CCTV yeah. footage? Was this somebody, is this a political protest? Is yeah. this just, uh, like you said, bad sometime? Yeah. Do we shame them? Do we find them and ask them to apologize? Should we, what, what do we do? Was you it, know. were they at fault? I mean, I mean, come on, dude. Like, if something like that happens, you should alert the, the cleaning staff right yeah. away, I would imagine. But uh, also the embarrassment of the situation would yeah. probably drive a lot of people yeah. to just hey, ignore the, it. Yeah, but, like, late, excuse me, miss, can you please help me out? <laughs> it's a little bit of my shit in front of the elevator. Can you just clean that out? Yeah. Oh. This, it lingered. It lingered. Poop molecules was... all over the parliament. Did, did you, this actually, th there's uh, other uh, stinky news that came out yesterday. Apparently, Will Smith, huh. on the set of Men in Black, the original Men in Black, 
uh, farted so badly that they had to clear the set for three hours. And really? <laughs> there, so yeah. Three hours? Okay, yeah. That's a bit, that's a bit exaggerated. I, I, come on. I feel like that. They probably just took a break because it yeah, wasn't yeah, going yeah. away, and then they just, you know, when it did work. But whatever. The point was, it was so bad they had to stop working. Will. Or at least a little bit. What did you eat, Will? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, anyways, that's that's our stinky news for the day. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to, uh, we have some updates about uh, the new uh, Digital Nomad Visa that is uh, starting, you know, everybody's excited about yeah. it, asking yeah. about the process. Now, a lot of Thai visa agencies are now offering support for the digital nomad visa applicants. So, visa agencies in Thailand are helping applicants with the Destination Thailand Visa, or DTV, process, which has been challenging due to inconsistent embassy requirements. The DTV, launched in July, appeals to digital nomads and expatriates, but has faced issues with cash bonds, proof of remote work, and other qualifications. Agencies now offer packages costing between 75,000 and 150,000 baht to assist with visa runs, document prep, and travel. Processing times vary, with some consulates offering same-day service. As long as regulations stay steady, these agencies are set to thrive, simplifying the visa application process for many. Now, this is something I've done in the past. I... Uh, I am no good at navigating the visa process on my own, so I am heavily inclined to yeah. use the uh, visa services for coming from agencies or law firms, things like that. And I highly recommend you do as well, so you don't get the headache of putting in all of the work and then forgetting to dot an I or cross a T, and all of a sudden all of that work you've put in is uh, gone mm. to waste anyways. So uh, enlist the professionals, I would say. <clears throat> anyways. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to move on to some of the stories from around ASEAN, mm -hmm. starting with Chinese scam hubs revived in Myanmar amid a Chinese shift in policy. Mm -hmm. Now, a U.S. Institute of Peace report reveals that Chinese scam hubs have resurged in Myanmar's Karen state, partly due to China's softer stance on Myanmar's military regime. China's shift in focus from cracking down on scams to supporting Myanmar's stability has allowed these operations to flourish. Scams, including pig butchering, investment frauds targeting Americans, are causing significant financial losses. Estimated between $5.5 and $15 billion annually, these criminal networks operate with local protection, making enforcement challenging. Now, the situation poses risks to U.S. national security and highlights the broader impact of China's strategic interests in Myanmar. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, who's our footage guy for that? Why is there just this one white guy on the screen <laughs> this whole time? Uh, that was some person warning about it. But anyways, the point is, yeah, these scam agencies are alive and well uh, in Myanmar, which is operating in largely a lawless environment. And uh, that allows room for the Chinese to come in and operate their uh, – not, it's not official Chinese – governments right like it's gang operations there but at the same time uh china's sort of softer stance on authoritarian regimes leads to an environment that can sort of foster uh the development of these massive scam operations it's not a problem just in myanmar it's a problem all over southeast asia right now um and uh, i'd like to see authorities be able to crack down on it more make it a safer environment for the locals and obviously stop victimizing uh people I, like do you even pick up your phone anymore i feel like it's just no a scam every time yeah. right yeah anyways i careful. threw away my phone three weeks ago did you yeah nice i, bet I you only use it. my watch now nice it seems like a more peaceful life i like yeah. that well anyways uh on to our next story which is uh a bit of a cross-border thing we're mm -hmm. doing now a cambodian maid has been deported from malaysia for social media criticism of her home country oh. Now, a Cambodian maid, uh, Nuan Tun, was arrested and deported from Malaysia for social media posts criticizing Cambodian leaders. At Cambodia's request, Malaysian authorities detained her last week. Upon her return, she was charged with incitement and discrimination, potentially facing up to five years in prison. Human rights groups have condemned Southeast Asian governments for aiding each other in detaining exiled dissidents, with Freedom House, uh, uh, which Freedom House describes as a growing tactic to silence opposition. Now, Nuan's case follows uh, the recent arrest of Cambodian reporter Mitch Dara, indicating Cambodia's heightened crackdown on overseas critics. I guess this means I probably shouldn't go to Cambodia anytime yeah. soon. Do um, yeah, this is a pretty scary stuff, a scary trend, especially because, okay, all right, the one guy that was arrested before was a journalist who, you know, journalists understand that they are taking on some risks when they engage in this activity. 
a uh, housekeeper, right? Like living in another country, just uh, sharing some social media posts. If they're if they're even keeping an eye on that, that's terrifying. Um, so uh, fair warning to everybody in Cambodia that this is apparently fair game, and uh, they're keeping a scrutiny on even the lowest level of criticism. Uh, be careful, yeah. uh, everybody. Don't get in trouble. Don't I would say. It. All right. We're going to move on to our next story, which is regarding a Singaporean ex-minister sentenced for corruption and abuse of power. Mm. We were just talking about Singaporean corruption yesterday. Mm -hmm. Former Singaporean minister Subramaniam Iswaran has been sentenced to 12 months in prison for accepting over 403000 Singaporean dollars in gifts and obstructing justice. This high-profile case involving gifts like Formula One tickets and a private jet ride has raised questions about Singapore's anti-corruption stance. The case underscores the People's Action Party's challenges as it prepares for upcoming elections amid scrutiny. Iswaran, once a key figure in government, pleaded guilty after charges were amended, making Singapore's first political trial in nearly 50 years. The scandal reflects growing public concerns over integrity in leadership. It, Singapore goes hard on corruption. Uh, not really, if it's only the first time in 50 years, but, <laughs> you know what I mean, that's, uh, whoa. It is, it, it, it is, it's the first political trial, so people yeah. in power have, uh, who knows what they've been getting away with for a long time. And the point is that the Singaporean public has put pressure on the government in order to start mm -hmm. opening up these investigations. Now the question becomes, at this time, who is it just a power play between people like you know the powers that be uh are they just creating a scapegoat or like holding up one you know head mm -hmm. so that the public is sated or are they really delving into the the uh uh the systemic corruption that exists within the country uh unclear because uh there are still more political trials being awaited uh, and we'll see how they play out. But I assume for many people this is good news to see some form of justice uh, for uh, perceived levels of corruption. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Give me your thoughts, people, in the comments. Yeah. Uh, now, our last story is a bit of a daring one, a strange one, and we're heading up uh, further east and north in Asia for this one. Now, a North Korean defector was caught trying to return to his home country on a stolen bus. That's right, a North Korean defector was detained by South Korean police after attempting to cross back into North Korea on a stolen bus. The man, in his 30s, stole the bus in Paju and drove it to the Unification Bridge, where he ignored soldiers' orders to stop crashing into a barricade. He reportedly wanted to return to North Korea due to difficulties in adjusting to life in the South, including unpaid fines. Such cases are rare, as most defectors remain in the South. Return attempts are risky, with potential imprisonment or re-education awaiting those who make it back. Uh, mm -hmm. Scary story. Uh, you know, I, my heart goes out to these defectors, right? People that risk everything to come across that that border. Mm. Uh, who knows what punishment their family goes through. Yeah. And then once they get to this new world, they are unable to adjust, and they feel even more lost than they were before. Um T just a terrible situation yeah. all around. I mean, it's awful to even know that like they're leaving their family behind, knowing that they're gonna suffer. Yeah, but I mean, at a certain point, there's like, I mean, who knows if this guy even had family left, right? True. Like, there's True. all sorts of disappearances, yeah. and some people just snap under that pressure. I don't think you can really yeah. victim blame in this situation, considering the regime that they live under, and. Uh, yeah, no end in sight there. There was a man recently. There was some other weird news. Apparently, uh, uh, Kim Jong Un was executing high level generals for not being able to control the flooding oh. in the nation. It was like, how do they, they, how are you going to get them to control the weather? <laughs> like a lot of uh, impossible uh -huh. tasks up there that uh, lead to you know. Exec he only deals in executions, does he? Uh, it seems like there's only re-education. Sure, that's usually ten years in a hard labor camp or something mm. like that. Uh, but even, you know, the, the prisoners that they keep from America, like that young, the young man uh, several years back who he stole a poster, like a propaganda poster, which was dumb for him to do. Uh, but he was held in uh, North Korea for a while, eventually returned to America where he quickly died uh, mm -hmm. due to his injuries uh, or whatever was happened to him sustained in North Korea. Mm. Don't mess with them, uh, I think, is the fair warning for everybody because... Uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> it seems like there's one likely outcome. Yeah, when you do. 
All right. Well, mm. ladies and gentlemen, those were some of the news topics from across Thailand and ASEAN. Mm. You can find more stories, of course, from Thailand on thetiger.com and ASEAN now. You can join in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That'll do it for the show today. Let's get into the comments, though, and yes, see uh, what everybody's talking about.